Good day and welcome back to the next episode on the Super Data Science YouTube channel. Today we are actually looking at the horizon chart. Um, the horizon chart as you might be familiar with it or not, but um, it looks something like this. This is an example of it and it's a good way to give a good indication of the density of a specific of specific measures and comparing different dimensions. As you can see in this case it was comparing the unemployment rate well, the difference from average on the um, uh, unemployment rate across a couple of states. The chart we will be developing is actually based on a um, net occupancy rate in the EU. Uh, well, net occupancy rate of beds, I should say, from the EU Open Data Platform or portal. Now, the data is available um, on the link, as you can see. Um, I have created a easier to digest um, data set for us. But in essence, what it gives us is um, the EU countries. So we've got the EU country code, the country name, as well as the region. And then month by month, starting off with the last month data that's available, which is June 2017, all the way through to, let's just have a quick look, on the side, 2005 January. Now, this is a percentage of occupancy of beds, um, and that would be hotel, uh, guest houses, and so forth, which is the average for that month um, for that specific country. Now, the region here is something just I've set up that we'll be using a bit later, so by no means um, it ha has it been supplied by the um, open data platform for from the EU, but you will see how an additional dimension can actually give us some further great insights. Now we'll use this data set to build our own horizon chart. So let's get to it. So we'll start off with a clean instance of Tableau and connecting to the Excel file. Now you can see it seems to be read in perfectly with all of the columns. However, the manner in which the data has been um, structured in this file um, is not correctly or easy to use in Tableau at the moment, having them as columns. So we'll just need to pivot all of these fields into um, lines. And as you might know already, we just select all of them, all of the months as such, I should say. And we'll just click on the drop down and say pivot. Now that would put, uh, put all of the columns down into rows and linking them to the respective countries, as well as bringing the specific value through. We need to change the name of the field. And in this case, we'll just call this the month. And for the actual value, we'll call this the occupancy. And we know this is a percentage, um, uh, as, a, as a, yeah, it's a percentage for that specific month or the average occupancy for that specific month. Now, what else we can change here, seeing as we're gonna put this on a timeline, is to change this from a string to a date. Um, and in this case, I'm just doing a bit of a shortcut is by clicking and changing the, the type to a date. What that would do, it automatically converts it actually correctly, and I've tested this, um, that's why I'm quite comfortable taking it, to the first day of that specific month, which is fine for our purposes, because we will only be using the specific month in any case. Now that we've set that up, we can go into our worksheet, and you can see everything is properly brought through. And for this, we need to firstly create a couple of buckets. So the way we structure the horizon chart is to create a number of buckets. In our case, it will be five buckets. And each bucket will be a range of the percentage. So between zero and 20%, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, and so forth up to 100%. And we will fill those buckets based on the percentage. So for instance, if we have 65% um, occupancy in a specific country, we will fill the buckets from zero to 20, with 20, from 20 to 40 with another 20. So basically filling them at max. So the, the, the maximum that each bucket can take is 20. And then the last bucket would be 20 minus the, um, the remaining part, right? So in, we said, um, for instance, it is uh, 45. Then we will only fill the, the bucket from 40 to 60 with five, right? The way we'll do that is to use a number of uh, calculated fields. In this case, I will just call them Oc, well, I'll create a short name for it, and it would be Oc Fact, all right? So um, that means occupancy factor, and we'll start off with zero to 20. Now, um, we'll use a if statement for this specifically, and we'll be typing out, so if the average of the occupancy is greater than 20, right? Then we need to, output a 20 
for that specific one. So if, like we said, if it's 45, for instance, this bucket will be filled to max, all right? If it's not the case, all right, we would just be outputting the average occupancy. So if this was just 5%, we'll just fill the first bucket with 5% and nothing else. And that would also be the end of our statement. So quite an easy and short one. It will get a bit more complex from here on. And I will just actually make a copy of this cause this actually forms the base of our next bucket as well. And as you can see, there we go. So occupancy factor zero to 20. And as I mentioned, we'll just do a couple more. And so again, we just keep consistently with the name. This is occupancy factor 20 to 40, for instance. And let's just paste the formula we had just now. What changes now is we will still say by if the average occupancy is greater than 40, which is um, obviously the, the maximum of the bucket. So you can see 20 to 40. Then we output a 20 to fill that bucket specifically. As I mentioned, we'll just have the maximum capacity of each bucket will be 20. Um, but here it changes slightly. So we say um, if it's not greater than 40, we'll just have another else if the average um, of the occupancy, we always work with the normal occupancy. If that is less than 20, which is the lower limit of the specific bucket, all right, so if that's less than 20, we would be using um, not, well, we'll then say we will be outputting a zero, all right, so um, if it's un obviously under the, the low limit, we put a zero. Um, if that is not the case, we'll have an else again, and we would just be outputting the average, all right, minus the lower limit once again so to recap if we had 35 it would not be it would not be greater than 40 so we'll go into this statement the um it would not be less than 20 so we'll um, we will skip that part but we will take the actual um, average minus 20 and leave a five residual value for that and output that uh, we just also need another end statement to make sure it is right. And again, I'm just going to copy this because from here on, the statement will look the same. All right, I'll hit apply and continue with the next one. So in this case, um, just as we had all the others, we will say occupancy factor. This time we make it from 40 to 60. And now we need to change our upper limit to 60 there and our two lower limits to 40. And once again, just copying that. Um, hitting apply and we will just continue in this fashion let's just paste that we will continue in that fat in this fashion um, and just let's just see we keep from 60 to 80 uh, and this is we just need to make sure that you actually update it correctly so upper lower and again the lower that's for 60 to 80 and I'll just copy this to keep track and our last bucket would be the occupation no, sorry occu um, occupancy factor 80 to 100 which would be our last one and again we would say put our lower sorry our upper limit over there and our lower limits over there all right and that those are our five buckets which will form the basis of our graph now the fun part all the prep work has been done let's start putting it into the actual sheet so we'll start off by putting the month in columns and making sure this is the discrete month. Currently it selects year by default. So we'll just choose month and that will run from January to December, obviously. And we will also then put the um, country on rows because we want to see it per country. All right. And we will be using a area chart of an area chart to in this case. So we'll just change the type or already. And in the next step, we literally just add each of these measures one by one by double clicking them into the visualization. And what you'll notice, it already automatically puts these measures into a measures value, which it groups properly. So I'll just keep on double clicking and adding these. And the graph would not look anything um, to what our example that looked, but we will get to the point where it actually makes sense. But for now, we're literally just putting in all of our measures into the graph as well as our um, month and country. Next, we'll use our um, actual measure values over here, and we'll just use the grouping over there and change these to um, discrete measures, because currently those are um, the continuous measures, and we'll put them into the rows. Now, we'll holding, be holding down control for this, um, as we just want to make a, a duplicate of it, but we cannot have both measures, in this case, also the discrete one over here. 
we needed the continuous one then in our rows, but we will take the discrete to change that into our colors. All right, because we want to use the um, discrete measures to distinguish between the different buckets. Now at the moment, you can see it's starting to look like our horizon chart, but it is currently being stacked on top of each other. And for our horizon chart, we mentioned the maximum can be 20, not 80 as in this case, or even up to 100 in certain cases. So what we'll do is we will be going to the analysis menu, stack charts, and sorry, stack marks and switching that off, which now means all of those values are just popped onto each other. Um, and as you remember from our measures and what our um, calculated fields we've created, the maximum can be 20, and those are all just laid on top of it. Next, we need to just clean it up a little bit to, to look familiar. And um, what we'll do firstly is to swap the order around of these measures. We just use it in the legend where we put the lowest values at the bottom because those are obviously the ones which needs to be displayed um, in the front of our chart. So you'll see now that, um, uh, sorry, yes, this should be displayed at the back of our chart. Sorry, yeah, the, the highest values goes to the front, as you can see in this case. Um, we want to show it like, like that. All right, um, the colors don't really work well um, in this case, so we can just also change the colors. So that's quite quickly. And you can use whatever works best for you. What I think works well here is to start off with a red, because um, we're working with occupancy, so we want to show the highest occupancy in a, in a more um, highlighted color. We'll start with, with red, we'll use orange, go to yellow, then blue, and then green with the lowest occupancy. So this again depends on what you're showing you. Um, for this visualization, I want to show where the highest occupancy is to, to draw people's attention to that. If you wanted to show that the other way around, you can obviously just change the colors also. I'm going to hit apply and there we go. So now you can see that um, at the back, our lowest occupancy, um, yeah, well, it shows low occupancy and all of a sudden in specific months, it shows a higher occupancy um, overlaid on top of it. So the colors are still not really um, crisp and clear. And this is due to it being by default set to opacity 60. I'll just make it opacity 100 and there we go. It pops out much nicer in this way. So next we can just tidy it up and um, make it look good. So I'll just make it a bit smaller. I'll hide all of the labels actually. So I can hide that label. Actually, oops, not rotate, my bad. Um, we'll just say hide labels there because we know it's the country, we don't need the sheet name, and we don't really need to see the month label as such because we've got the months at the bottom there. So it is quite clear what we are looking at. I'll just resize this even a little bit more to make it a bit smaller. Um, and get, a, get more of their countries on, on the visualization. And the next thing I would be doing um, is just to incorporate the average occupancy into our model um, by just right click drag over onto detail or um, you can just actually drag it over onto detail and change it over there to average. Um, and that would allow us now to use it inside the tooltip because as you can see the tooltip is there, but it's not really standing, that's bringing out the information that we really want to see. So for that, in that case, what I normally do, and if you've watched some other videos, you would have noticed this, I just change this uh, size to a bit bigger, remove the command buttons as we don't need those, and change this to a nice color that stands out. Um, we'll leave the country in there and we will just have the average occupancy in there as a percentage. So we can do a quick preview just to see what it will look like. And there we go. So for instance, it would, look, it would show us the specific month we're looking at as well as the country and the average occupancy. Now, this is obviously a percentage and it currently shows as the, um, as a, not as a percentage. So a way that you can fix that is just right click on the format. And um, in this case, I'm just gonna keep it as number, but I'm just gonna add a percentage suffix because um, I'm not gonna change the type as such. And now you would see, well, I'm sorry, I should change it in the pane. Keep it as a number with, and I'll actually change it a small place and make it with a suffix of a percentage. And there we are. So if you want to investigate this a little bit now, we can see that in Croatia in August is the busiest time with the, the most um, occup uh, occup occupancy, <laughs> apologies, um, where other, other countries like Slo the Slovak Republic um, have a quite a low average occupancy during the same period of time. And now you can use this to derive some, some very interesting insights. What I found very helpful, um, seeing as this is quite a lot of information and as you make it smaller, you're, also, you're starting to lose the picture a little bit, as you can see there, is I use the regions. Now, 
I put the regions into filter and we'll just use all of the regions. I um, just show the filter as well and I just change the type of the filter or at least the way it's displayed into a um, single value list. So we can look at all the countries together and compare each of them. Or you can sp uh, potentially look at each individual region. Now you'd see all of a sudden um, the picture becomes a bit clearer and now we can also make this a bit bigger that some regions have a higher occupancy overall than other regions. So what's very interesting is if you look at Western Europe, for instance, you will notice that um, generally, actually for all of them, generally the summer holidays being Northern Hemisphere is around the July, September period. But if you specifically look at the Western Europe, there's two countries to stand out, which is Austria and Switzerland that have a very period, very busy period in February and which might seem interesting um, and the reason for that I would I would guess are due to ski holidays that you find a lot of people going for ski holidays during that period which is normally the best time to go for for ski holidays and that's how you can derive very interesting insights in in out of these um, horizon shots you can also notice that um, the southern part of Europe has got a much higher occupancy even in the month of August than Western Europe and similarly um, if you just look at a specific uh, country in in the northern parts of Europe, you can see that Iceland is quite a um, a uh, frequently visited region in northern Europe uh, during that period. All right, and that concludes our visualization or our tutorial today um, on learning how to do horizon charts. I hope you um, have learned a new chart type again and how to build this and make it applicable to your own visualizations and your own projects. If you have any questions or any suggestions, let's leave it, leave it for us on the um, comment section within YouTube and the YouTube comment section. And um, do not forget you are able to get this data set under the, the link which is provided also below this video on the Super Data, sorry, Super Data Science website. All right. Um, hope you had fun. Hope you had learned a lot. And um, until next time.